name is Edward Halecki. I'm with the Virtualization Practice, and I'm bringing to you Virtual Thoughts with Adam Carter of Login VSI. Adam, what do you do at Login VSI? Hey, Edward. I'm the product manager for our latest product offering, which is called Login PI. And Login PI, always, I always say Login Pi, and I've got to stop that, right? It's now PI, because if it says Login Pi, I think it's one of these. Yeah, that's there's there's a little bit of you know that that's why we we spell it out or we pronounce both letters we call it PI so think of it as uh, you know performance insights or or a private investigator for your VDI environment. I like the private investigator one better than performance insights. Everybody does performance something. Private <laughs> investigator is new, interesting, and actually has other connotations that would be rather intriguing as well. Yeah, and that that's kind of the idea. That's how we want people to think about the product. Is here's here's a little bit of. of of extra sleuthing about what's happening in your, your VDI environment. Now, most people may or may never have used Login VSI. I have. I think it's a great little product. So why don't we describe a little bit about that and what part of that is used by PI? Sure. So so Login VSI is about five years old now. We released version 4 last year, and uh, or I think we're on 4.3 or something now. But anyway, the product really came about as this idea of how much hardware do I need to, to deploy VDI and will I get the same kind of scales as I get with with uh, remote desktop services or terminal services or something like that. So the product works by by simulating users. Kind of think of a, an army of, of uh, drone users or robot users in your VDI environment. With VSI you tell it, I want to do a test. I want to see what happens when uh, 100 users are using this system or when 1,000 users are using this cluster. And Login VSI will log on that 100 or 1,000 users and when we've got some automation that kicks off, so they start simulating and doing the things real users do. They send email, they create Word documents, and we time all those transactions. You even wait because people, you, you're emulating people. You're not just doing this boom, boom, boom. It's like, ah, guy's going out for a cup of coffee now. Yeah, yeah. We'll it kind even of, stays that on the screen or used to, going out for a yeah, cup of coffee. It still does. We'll, we'll kind of idle for a little while and say we're doing that. So you're trying uh, to emulate a real user versus a drone user. Yeah, we try to do as many of the things that real users do and generate real user traffic on the wire and on the disk and, and CPU utilization. Using and then, real life, the real life applications. I mean, you're looking at Microsoft Office, Office 365, PDF viewers, and mm -hmm. some 3D, I saw some 3D graphics ones in there yeah. at some point in time. I mean, it's real applications, mm -hmm. which means if you're going to run these tests, you have to have licenses or availability of all these testing frameworks. So you got to build out for login VSI, I have to build out that master image that can be used. Yeah, and that's but that's. In it. Mm -hmm. And one of the key differentiators, though, is we give you all those workloads already done, so you don't need to figure out your own automation for Outlook and, and how to you know simulate users opening email and sending email. We give you those workloads that that do all that for you. And, and there really some odd it's... edge case things too that prevent you from doing. I remember with workstation um, with Office. Outlook, it would actually detect that this is the first time you used it and do the yeah. right thing, which is kind of yeah. cool. Creates the profile and does all those things. Yeah. Uh, but the idea is, you, you know, you can imagine, let's say you, you want to do a, a thousand user test on a cluster. We start logging in users. There's 10 users on the system, 20 users, 100 users, 200 users. And we're doing all those transactions, opening Word documents, sending email, and we're timing all those transactions. How long does that take for that file open dialog box to appear? How long does it take to copy a file? And as you can imagine, as you get more and more users on a system, we get more load, more load. Those those transactions start taking longer and longer. Mm -hmm. We basically, we take into account what's the latency that's acceptable to users, what's the latency we're seeing on this system. And we basically, we, we find the sweet spot where you've got the most possible users on the system, but they're not seeing a, a, a performance degradation that, you know, where they're going to look at the system and say, this is too slow, I can't use this. So we find that sweet spot for you. We call that your VSI Max. You did a thousand user test. You were great with 800 users on this system. Once you got to 850, we started to see some some response time latency that users would complain about. So you kind of know that's your sweet spot in that environment is 850 users. And then you make your decision there. Well, we want to get to a thousand users. Do we buy more hardware? Do we look at how we can tune some efficiency into our image so that we can stack more users on the same hardware? But we really we help you understand what's the experience going to be like with. X number of real yes, users of the system. That's the key. It's experience. It's not based on just raw numbers. It's taking those numbers and that timing and saying, you know what, a half a second's all right. Three seconds, a user's going to complain. 
Yeah, and that's that's really what to think of us as. We're that user experience for for your uh, remote desktop or VDI environment. We're all about delivering the best user experience and understanding what it looks like. But VSI does that as a test. So I have to, I'm, I'm testing my environment before I roll it out into production. Once it's in production, you don't want to use login VSI to test the environment anymore. It's too heavy. Yeah, uh, you know, we, we have customers that if they have downtimes, like, you know, if the systems are are not in use on the weekends, they'll still do some testing on the weekends, especially if they've got new gold images they want to roll out or things. But that but generally, sense. it's it's a lab product, typically. You've got a lab set aside, and that's where you're doing the testing before rolling into production. But PI, on the other hand, is a production-level tool where you're doing the exact same thing with maybe a couple of different users, and get, judging those responses and reporting them in real time, that's what PI is do, doing. So it's not just focusing on what VSI was doing and saying, okay, I'm going to do that, but on a more continual basis, more operationally sensitive. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So the idea is PI picks up where VSI leaves off. You, you figured out that perfect configuration. You know what your hardware is capable of with, with VSI. So you deploy, you go into production. PI is about making sure that uh, that that expectation you were expecting is, is being lived up to. So are we seeing performance in production the way we expected it to? And, and rather than do it by sending hundreds or thousands of users at the system, as you said, we have one user or a couple of users running that same kind of an automation, but it's all just on a schedule. They automatically log in once an hour or, or every five minutes, however you want to configure it, and do a temperature check. How long are login times taking right now? What are application response times look like right now? And if we see anything out of the ordinary, generate an alert to notify an administrator that things things aren't good right now. So with remote, re, Robo, remote office, you could actually detect that there's lack, lack of connectivity. Yeah. You get a warning saying, hey, um, I couldn't run the test. I couldn't talk to him. Yeah, yeah, we do that as well. You know, we, we, we have our agent, our, we call it our launcher agent, that, that's where we initiate the tests from. And sure, if, if we're expecting tests coming in from from a launcher agent sitting in a, a remote office in Boise, Idaho, and, and we don't see those tests come in, we'll generate alerts too to say something's wrong. Either the WAN connection is down or a broker is down. But in any event, we were expecting to see login PI users logging in from Boise, and it's not happening. Well, and that actually makes sense. If, say it's a, 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 um, a um, retail store, and you they have a bunch of VDI sessions there, maybe four or five, mm -hmm. but that's they use that for basically doing all of their financials. Yeah. Buying and selling. It's like, ah, no connectivity means there's a problem. We need to probably call them and find out what's happening. So this extends past just normal, just how's my VDI working, but to being how Robo is doing or how that particular office is connected. You can maybe be able to detect more with it than just end user computing. Yeah, I mean that's the, that's really our goal is is to help out admins. You know, we'd talk to people when we were designing the product that would say, "Yeah, we don't we don't find out we have outages until users start calling the help desk." And then it's an easy fix for us, but that was still 15 minutes or 20 minutes of downtime while someone called the help desk and help desk reported it to us. So that's the we're trying to cut out that time. Let's get that be that early warning system to let you know about those outages before the help desk calls start coming yeah, in. Yeah, look, the exchange server is down. You may or may not get a warning because you may or may not be monitoring it. This will help you monitor and get you a faster response saying, I better look at that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Now, when you think about login PI, what are the types of things we're sleuthing other than, you know, are you alive? In yeah. response time, is there anything more to it? Well, you, you can do more than that. We have a pretty robust scripting language, so you could actually script in some interactivity. So you know, our, our, by, by default, we say, hey, let's just launch these applications and see what the launch time is. That way we'll get errors. If, if the app fails to launch, we'll get errors. If it's uh, you know maybe you're publishing it with AppV or something and the publishing is broken, you'll find out about that. If the apps are taking just way too long to start. So if Outlook is starting, but then it just takes forever for it to connect up to the Exchange server, you know, we'd, we'll give you those hints. We'll let you know things are just taking longer than expected, so you can go track down what's causing it. Well, and if they're taking longer than expected, do you do more than just warn me? Do you, can you collect some data and send it to me? Or what do you do at that point? Say you notice that Exchange or Outlook is taking a minute and a half to load when it normally only takes 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, that could be a number of different problems, including malware. You know, it's a, it's a desktop. You've got to get some. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, can, can you collect any information specifically of the device or the desktop to say, you know, what the, so I can do some root cause analysis? We're, we're doing some more of that. As I said, the product came out in April, and um, you know it, it kind of has some of that basic functionality, but that's some of the things that we're looking at as we look forward to, to what do we do next with the product. It's what what's some of that, what more information could administrators use rather than just telling them Outlook is slow? What else can we tell them? Can we say, and you know, we reported CPU at 100%, or we're also seeing network latency in the, the five or six second range. Uh, so we're, those are kind of things that... Uh, we're still in, in active development on the product and our, our dev team is bigger than ever. And that's the kind of thing that you'll start to see more of that functionality come in, in in terms of giving you more hints or more clues to, to figure out where that slowdown is coming from. And I actually think with something like Login Pi, PI, I should say, that getting those hints is actually incredibly valuable. Getting notification that things are bad helps the help desk. Mm -hmm. Getting th notification that, you know, more data of a system at the time of the problem is better than an admin coming in six hours later or whenever he can. It won't happen right away. And the problem is just not there anymore. Right. And you get the you get a lot of like, well, it was there. And every time this guy logs in, it's there. Every time the, the admin does, it's not there. Something's going to gonna be, it. it's hard to fix, hard to find yeah. out. You know, they may go say, hey, you know, it's taking too long. Let's just give them a whole new instance. And it really is not needed. It's something else. Yeah. And that's the other thing that's a real differentiator for us is we are measuring that user experience. We're seeing what real users see. There's lots of monitoring tools out there that, that can send you alerts and send you a text and let you know when your CPU is at 100% yeah. on your RDS server. But what does that mean? Is that good or bad for users? That might be great. That might mean that I'm, I'm using 100% of the CPUs I paid for and we're still delivering a, a fantastic experience to every user, right? 100% CPU might not be a cause for alarm. But that's what PI will tell you. Well, we'll, most we'll, times we'll... it is, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um I used to do a demo, you know, where I would just fire off like a prime number calculator in the background, which spiked the CPU to 100% on my on my RDS servers or my terminal servers. You know, creates creates lots of excitement for admins, but the user performance when we look at it with PI didn't really change. Some apps are are good at taking the resources when they're available, but giving them back when they're requested. Those are the kinds of things we can help you find out. Is this a real issue? All of our Operations consoles are blowing up, telling us that our systems are highly overloaded. But PI will tell you, well, users aren't really seeing a difference, or users are seeing login times taking five seconds longer than normal. But that's it. You may want to fix that, or change that, or not not even do anything, or just post a note saying, you know, login times may be a little slower. We're sorry. Yeah. But that's it. Everything else should be fine. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing is a lot of admins don't give that. That this is will login PI help me do that to say hey, this is the message you should give your users because or in general do you have some guidelines around that for anybody? Because when they do start seeing these slowdowns, how we tell the users is actually much more important in some cases than mm -hmm. what's actually happening. Yep, the other use case that we have is validating user complaints. So here's a great example. We talked to a customer who. Um, has a centralized VDI environment in North America, but they've got outsourced partners around the world doing data entry. So they're all connecting into this North American data center from all over the place. And uh, you know, the, the, the customer noticed that some of their outsourced partners were much more efficient than others. Some were doing lots of data entry, some not so much. When they went to the slower partners and asked them, you know, why, why is your performance so poor? They said, well, it's your VDI is just so slow from our country. It takes us too long to get anything done in your VDI environment. So in that case, the customer had to jump on a plane, fly around the world, sit down in front of a terminal and say, I don't know, this looks like it's performing just as well as it does from all these other countries that, that do great for us. But they had to fly around the world to do that. With Login PI, they could just deploy a, a Login PI launcher agent there, let it run some sessions and do some tests. And then without leaving their office, they could say, look, I'm comparing the test results that you're getting with the test results I'm getting from these other countries, and they're all the same. The login, the, the VDI performance isn't the bottleneck here. Well, and that actually begs the question, I mean, could it be just user knowledge in, in, of the application? So in PI, are you actually able to run custom apps, not just the generic ones that, every, that everybody runs, like all the Office and PDF viewers and things like that? Yeah, yeah, the workloads are, are fully configurable. Uh, the ones that come out of the box test things like Office or, or the native MS Paint and things that are built into Windows. 
but it's fully configurable. If you have your own applications, you want to test what the startup time is for those, maybe the login time or or a little bit of interactivity in the app, you can you can custom script all of that with our scripting language. Do you have custom scripting of, of SaaS applications? Like Salesforce sure. and things like that? Yeah, I mean, we, um, we, we can script just about anything. I, you know, our, our scripting language is really just a matter of telling Windows, launch word.exe, and then send this series of keystrokes to, to, to that active window once it launches. Yeah, BI Explorer, I mean, an Internet Explorer where the IE or whatever it is, or Firefox with, like, go to this URL, log in. Yeah, yeah, you could, you could script that. Yeah, the browser stuff is the same way. You could start a browser, tell it to navigate to a URL, and, and you know, send so some, some keystrokes to a form there. This sounds like it works great if I have my own VDI, whether or not it's Citrix or VMware or even Microsoft and some of the others are out there. But mm -hmm. how does this work with if I'm in a DAS? And Amazon Workspaces, for example. Yeah, that's that's the next big frontier. That's the next question that people have. Either either customers want to make sure and, and keep their DAS provider honest and make sure that they're really getting the uptime that they were they were promised, or, or DAS providers just want to know what what that resulting experience is for their customers. Um, so that's uh, we've actually rolled out an update earlier this month to the product. That's kind of our first step towards what I call cloud enabling login PI. Uh, I think you'll see us wrap that up in, a, in another update before the end of the year where. Yeah, it, at that point, it won't matter where your PI server is, where your desktops are, where your uh, endpoints are you want to do testing from. But as, as long as we've got web connectivity there, we can make that scenario work, which opens us up for an Amazon Workspaces desktop, uh, an Azure Remote App desktop. doesn't really matter where you're getting your apps from. PI should be able to test them. Yeah, like at GPU Tech Conference last year, when I was there, they had like a dozen, half dozen, a half dozen DAS providers for 3D graphics. It was really pretty cool. It's like, yeah, we just do 3D graphics. It's like, cool. Yeah. And they're just, they're not workspaces or anything. You can get GPU enabled workspaces too, but mm -hmm. it was actually rather unique. So that leads to the next question is, how are you doing with testing of things like AutoCAD and all that and to determine 3D graphics performance? And yeah. is there a kind of a what if scenario capability inside of PI and or VSI to say, this is how it would run on a normal session without GPUs. Mm -hmm. I can do a what if for GPUs and tell you kind of like it's going to be it's going to run ten percent faster or twenty percent faster. Have you guys done all that logic yet? Because that seems like the next frontier. Yeah, that's one of the things that we did last year. Was we announced what we called the graphics framework for VSI. So it was a, an add-on component to VSI that would do some of that three D graphics testing. So if you you know you did want to see how AutoCAD was going to perform or or some uh, you know video rendering or or whatever it was that that uses the graphics accelerator, we came out with a a, a workload or a, a framework for doing that within VSI last year, and now we're extending that this year and actually giving you some of those 3D workloads. Customers looked at it and said, well, this is nice, but we're going to have to do all this scripting ourselves. Can't you just give us yeah. a workload that's already scripted? So that that's that's the next step for that for us. So as I said, that's a that's a VSI component to kind of test what is that graphics performance going to be. And then once you scale. have it in VSI, you'll be able to bring it in PI. And then yeah, ultimately the goal is how can we move some of that into to PI as customer as, as customers demand it. When customers want it in PI, then uh, then we'll start to focus on it. Wonderful. Well, um, Adam, thank you very much for being on Virtual Thoughts with me. Oh yeah, this was great. Thanks for having me on. All right. Well, uh, look for this everybody on the YouTube channel for virtualization practice. Again, thank you, Adam, and we'll talk to everybody later. Thanks.